The Great Pyramid of Giza is probably the only architecture set LEGO has ever released that I actually wanted to have. Nothing against the skylines and all the things the theme has gotten us used to, it just never really gotten into me aside from a few sets for the pieces. But this one is taking the theme into a whole new direction which I'm really, really liking. The footprint of the model is actually really big and it really surprised me as I was building it, maybe because I've gotten used to how small architecture sets usually are, but this one is 44 studs wide and 40 studs deep, almost the size of one of the big LEGO base plates. Onto the model there's a lot to talk about. Looking at the big pyramid you may think that this is somewhat of a boring build but the superstructure can be removed and there's a lot of interior details to it. But before that let's take a look at the surroundings of the pyramid which is meant to represent how the setting might have looked a few thousand years ago. There's a small village filled with different sized huts with a very useful microscale technique giving the window details making use of a grill element stuck between regular plates. In the middle of the village an obelisk can be seen as well as a lot of foliage elements to represent trees and we move on to the Nile River complete with two felucas of different sizes, the small boats with triangle sails used back then. We've seen this technique of river building in a couple of different LEGO sets in the past, regular plates covered by transparent blue tiles but this time around I feel too many colors were used underneath making the water effect less effective in my opinion. At the front of the model, the standard black 1x8 tile all architecture sets have, but this set comes with an extra one you can interchange with hieroglyphic writing that according to the instruction booklet translates to Khufu's horizon, a nod to the Egyptian ruler Khufu that was buried in the Great Pyramid. Next to it, the Valley Temple making good use of a great building technique with wall elements stacked on their sides for clever microscaled stairs, and on its back there's a passageway built at an angle leading to the Great Pyramid entrance with a representation of three microscaled sphinxes. Finally next to those, two smaller pyramids where it's very likely that Khufu's family members may have been buried. Pyramids are huge tombs and as such have sarcophagus inside which are represented in the set as well. You'll only ever know this if you build the model as these are really hard to take off to show. Easier access to see these could have been a nice feature to include in the set, but at the same time, burying the LEGO sarcophagus forever like pharaohs did back in the day does give the set a special vibe. Before we go into the highlight of this set, sand dunes represented by curved slope elements on both sides of the pyramid are also worth mentioning. Finally we get to the Great Pyramid, and while looking like it might have been a boring structure to build, it's one of those cases where I was very much into the building experience just to understand how big the thing would be in the end, and let me tell you, it's quite impressive. A bottom layer of 10 slopes, lots and lots of useful white slopes topped by a half pyramid slope element in this metallic gold color. Now be prepared for what's to come. The Great Pyramid of Giza set gives you half a pyramid actually. I do understand that maybe having a full pyramid wouldn't have that much more to the set experience as a whole and the money saved on bricks on that half pyramid allowed us to have all of the nice detailing in the front, but still I can understand how some people might be bothered by it. And LEGO even dared being bolder by placing two cross axle holes down here, meaning that if you end up buying two of these sets, you can finally have a complete pyramid. The back of the pyramid being cut in half does let us explore the passageways the actual pyramid has, all leading to Khufu's burial chamber with its sarcophagus represented in the same fashion as the ones we've seen in the smaller pyramids. The top of the pyramid can be lifted to reveal another construction stage of the pyramid, which I actually really like. It's a bit of a guesswork by the designer and even to this day people can't quite figure out how the actual pyramids were built, but maybe there were cranes, slopes and ropes to push the boulders into place. The techniques used to achieve this sloped detail at an angle were really cool to build as was the pyramid superstructure making use of a bunch of minifigure leather elements as the support for all of the white slopes outside. The final build, while looking a bit plain by not having a whole lot of different colors used, wasn't plain at all to build in the early stages of the set and the building experience was overall really cool for most of the way. 
The water building part of the set wasn't fun, as wasn't the placement of all of the foliage elements by the river area, and all of the tiles the pyramid under construction has. It's a lot of 10 on 10, so I spent an unreasonable amount of time trying to decipher where every little tile was supposed to go. But besides all those minor things, I like this set a lot. I might be a bit biased as I'm fascinated by the ancient Egyptian culture, so in that regard this set speaks a lot to me. But I can't help but wonder what kinds of cool and far more interesting architecture sets LEGO might do in the future if they follow on the footsteps of the Great Pyramid of Giza set. Or uh, let me rephrase that. If they follow on the footsteps of the Great Alf Pyramid of Giza set.